with Danny. Come, quick. Look. Him go toward Port Picacho, but him take Winter Trail. We'll never make it. Come on. by a snake, I guess. I want to thank you very much. Does my mask still frighten you? Nothing in this west frightens me. Everything astounds me. But that's not the point. I must get to Fort Picacho tonight. Well, Miss Edwards, why is it necessary to reach the fort tonight? To prevent a murder, that's why. A cold-blooded murder. Oh, you're west. You're stupid, blundering, brutal west. Would you mind telling me about it? I may be able to help. The Marshal of Panama. He'll be shot down tomorrow, killed by a gang of outlaws unless something is done. I must get to the fort and call out the troops. But getting to the fort wouldn't help. You see, the troops can't interfere in a purely civil matter. Civil matter? Criminal matter, you mean? Oh, you men. You're all alike. Talk, talk, talk. Can't somebody do something? Get your hands up. Preach! Are you all right, sir, honey? I followed your trail as fast as I could. Of course I'm all right, Roy. This man saved my life. This outlaw, you mean? Believe me, I'm not an outlaw. Look, I'm Marshal of Panama. I only believe what I see. Now, take off that mask. You drop gun. All right, Tano. He's a friend. See, Marshal, this mask is on the side of the law. It's helped others. Maybe it can help you. I suppose you tell me what happened. I reckon I got no choice. Go ahead, Roy. Tell him. Let him see how idiotic a town full of men can be when they set their minds to it. Well, mister, I've only been Marshal less than a year. I got my badge about the time Sarah here came out from Boston to teach school. I engaged to teach children. Had I known the whole town needed educating, I would have stayed home. Well, Panama was a law-abiding town before Joe Huntsaker moved in. I'm coming to that. I arrested one of Big Joe's men last Saturday night, a gunslinger named Sonora Kid. Uh, him, bad medicine. Plenty bad. I threw him in jail. He's there now, waiting trial. Well, what's the matter with that, Marshal? Just this. This creature, this Big Joe, whatever his name is, sent word into town that if the Sonora Kid is not turned loose by noon tomorrow, he'll come and get him. And if Roy stands in his way, that'll just be too bad for him. Certainly Roy's not alone. He must have the town's people behind him. Too far behind him, if you ask me. Just let me tell you what the good citizens of Panama did to meet this challenge. I know. Order! Order! Quiet now. Charlie Matthews has the floor to give us the businessman's point of view. Judge, folks, let's face this calm and sensible. Big Joe means what he says. He'll ride into town tomorrow. His gunman with him. And they'll take the Sonora kid out of town to do it. So I say, let's beat them to it. Let's let the kid go now. And save our property. And maybe some lives. Now, just a minute. I listen to all the guff I'm going to. You back down now. You let Big Joe know you're scared. And him and his gang will move in on you sure as shooting, and I mean shooting. Why, he'll take your property and your lives, too, if you as much as let out a squawk. I say, let's call him. I say the kid goes to trial. Order! Order! Quiet! Al Ames has been trying for ten minutes now to get a word in. Yes, Gil. I know how you feel, boys. As banker and Wells Fargo agent, I've got more to lose than most of you. But I'm on Roy's side. Marshal Bell is the law. And if he says he can deal with Big Joe Hunsaker, I say let him deal with him. Besides, Roy's no slouch with a gun. I got a good chance. Chance? What kind of a chance has an honest man got against a gunslinger that makes a business of killing? Justice isn't a matter of chance, it's a matter of right and wrong. And you don't decide that by who draws the fastest gun. Just leave it to chance often enough and there won't be anyone left but thieves and murderers. All the honest men will be dead, shot down in one vast insane shooting gallery. But they wouldn't listen. And you were the worst of the lot. Did you suggest anything to do about the situation, Miss Edwards? I surely did. It's as simple as ABC. When Big Joe rides into town tomorrow, let every man that owns a gun take cover. Then from the windows and the doors, shoot him down like the mad dog he is. Kill him before he kills anyone else. You mean bushwhacking? From hiding, without even giving him a chance to draw. 
I told her it would be cold-blooded murder, even against Big Joe. It would be nothing of the kind. It would be execution, pure and simple. The execution of a known killer. Roy isn't an executioner, Miss Edwards. He's a marshal. A marshal can't shoot a man down in cold blood. Then what's your solution? I want you and Roy to go back to Panamint. Back to Panamint? And let Roy face that killer alone? I promise you, Roy will not face Big Joe alone. Look, stranger, I don't need any nurse. Thanks just the same. Big Joe don't scare me. Now, come on, honey. Don't honey me! Go on and get yourself killed if you want to. I don't care. Why did I have to let myself in for this? Why did I have to fall in love with a, an infant? All spunk and no brains. Oh, now, honey, you... Oh, Roy. Scratch like wild cat, purr like kitten. You think him have two women in one? She'll scratch to save him, purr to please him. Lucky man, Tano. We've got to see to it that Big Joe doesn't change his luck. Come on. <laughs> to find out who he is. Nothing goes wrong, Joe. What could go wrong, Cal? This is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Get in the house. What are you doing here, Ensign? Got him sneaking up the canyon. What are you doing here, I said? Who sent you? You know, Brad, I think this poor fellow's got something stuck in his throat. Take him over yonder, see if Tom can get it out. <laughs> now mind, you don't have to kill that marshal, Joe. Just lay him up till we're through. Well, they get used to shooting straight. Ain't so easy to aim crooked, Cal. Just you leave it to me. When's that big gold shipment due in? Early next week. Maybe Wednesday. No later. Perfect. Couldn't be better. Bye, Cal. Joe. while you still got a face to talk with. This is your last chance, Engine. Spell it. Hot yet, Tom? 
him why. Hey, talk. Now, who sent you? Tonto. Now, Brad? What's it mean? Ah, uh, some Indian lingo. How about it, Brad? Now? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, you're getting closer. Come on. Big Joe was up to. Set up a camp. Hide the horses as far back as you can. Me do that, Kimitani. Right. You fellas was plumb tuckered out. Getting ready to go Betty by. Me, I couldn't go to sleep. I got to wondering. How come we didn't see nobody where them shots come from? Well, sir, I went to look. Here's what I found. Silver bullet. The old ranger. If he's mixed up in this, it changes everything. We won't ride into town tomorrow. Of course we're riding in. When we get another chance to stop that meddling buzzard for good and all. Tom, when we ride in, I want you to pay attention to nothing else. Just plug him. Just him, you understand? It'll be a pleasure, boss. in at 10 o'clock. Where's Roy? I don't know. This room faces south, doesn't it? Yes, why? I just wanted to make sure. Now what? Don't let anyone in. Don't make a sound. Sarah, honey, you there? I don't know why I'm... You won't regret it. Now listen carefully on what you're to do. Many lives may depend.
Big Joe's riding in. I seen him crossing the dry wash at Avery's. From Avery's? Well, they should get here about 10. Where is Roy, anyway? If he's left us in the lurch, he should be run out of town. All right, all right. But I just don't believe old Roy's yellow dog, but that's all. Me neither. Roy's got something up his sleeve. You'll see. He'd better have. <laughs> Anybody seen Sarah Miss Edwards this morning? Marshal Bell. Instead of worrying about a young lady who's probably safe in her room, you'd better give a little thought to your duty. Oh, there's plenty of time. There are precisely eight minutes of time. How come you're so sure of that? Why, why, everybody knows, Roy. Big Joe's out just past Avery's five minutes ago. All right, he comes, I'll handle him. I'll handle him. But you all listen here. This isn't only my fight. He's riding against the town. I'm no one. I want some deputies. Well, come on. I got a pocket full of badges. Who'll pin them on? Well, I would, Roy, but uh, I'm a family man. Me too, Roy. I, I just can't risk it. Give me a badge. I got a pass here to get to the jail. Now, John. Yes, Roy. You stand here. Open the door when I tell you to. Leave it open. Let's be out of sight. Right. Mr. Ames, wait till I go down the steps, then come out on the porch. Keep your hand close to your gun, but don't draw. Understand? I understand. I know what to do. John. Hold it, Marshal. Don't try to draw. Everybody be quiet and there'll be no bloodshed. You. Out in the street. Me? You mean me? There's a law against carrying guns in this town. No, tell me about it. You heard what I said? I'm coming for yours. <laughs> you hear that, boys? He's coming for my guns. <laughs> Never mind. I'll handle this myself. Don't nobody mix in. I'm not going to let him do it. Oh, best of you stay inside. But it's not his job. Him help you.
still don't know how he did it. Took Big Joe with his own gun. He was helped, darling. Helped? From on high. On high? What do you mean? Tell you later. Well, can't you even tell me his name? Well, they call him the Lone Ranger. I do We're in time for the celebration. Ah, this big day for Americans, Kimisabe. February the 12th, Lincoln's birthday. Gettysburg Address will be given by Phil Beach. Phil Beach? I may remember him, Kimisabe. Him plenty bad. Well, he's paid for his mistakes. According to this sign, it looks like he's changed. Maybe, maybe not. Come to think of it, I've heard he's married and living on the right side of the law. Now that good if too, Kimisabe. Let's look him up, see if he is. No, Ann, I'm not going. Lincoln Day business is all right, but I've got too much on my mind. But they're counting on you, Phil. Darling, it's not really important, not nearly as important as other things. Besides, I don't want to go alone. You don't have to. I'm going with you. But you can't, darling. You heard what the doctor said. He's been a sick girl, and you're not well yet. Well, then go without me. Maybe I will. But there's something else first. Something else? What? Phil, are you going to see Dad? Phil, please, don't. Do you think I'm looking forward to it? Looking forward to begging? Yeah. But there's just a chance, the old miser. Just a chance he might be decent enough to help his own daughter. Phil, don't go. You know how he hates you, and you have such a temper, both of you. Darling, I've got to try. I'm going down to the shop. Hello, Lefty. It's been a long time. Yeah, it has. World treating you all right? I'm not complaining. Neither am I. We're making a treat us all right. Ain't we, Fingers? Yeah. Meet my new partner, Fingers Blake. My ex-partner, Phil Beach. Real sociable, Haiti. Look, boys, if you want a meal and stay around a day or two, you're, you're welcome. But if it's a job you're after. <laughs> a job? <laughs> you're a funny man, Phil. Always was. You know, I remember the warden used to let us put on shows now and then. I was pretty good, but uh, Phil here was the best of all. He used to recite and make funny turns. Act. Like now. Get to the point. What do you want? Money. Could you use some? <laughs> yeah, I certainly could. But not your kind. No more easy money for me. Are you sure, Phil? You know, the three of us could knock over that ten-pot bank and get out of town before the sheriff ever knew what was happening. We'd split the loot and fingers would meet keep right on going. They'd be looking for three men, Phil. Nobody'd link you up with it. Come on, Phil. Give us a little help. Even your wife won't know. I'll give you help. Now get out of here. Get out quick. All right. See you, Phil. Mrs. Beach, uh, please don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. I know who you are. You're the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Uh, Phil told you about us? Yes. You sent him to prison. Yes, ma'am, we did. Because of that, you will not like us, maybe. I'm grateful to you, and so is Phil. What you did straightened him out. Well, we're very glad you feel that way. Is Phil home? We'd like to say hello. I wish he were. Right now, he's paying a call on my father. And I'm worried. I'm so worried. If there's anything we could do, we'd like to help. They hate each other so. I wonder, could you, would you do me a great favor? I mean, go there and see if everything's all right. We'd be glad to. Dad's ranch is about two miles from here. Just follow the road going north. Can't miss it. Yes, ma'am. Come on, Tonto. Thank you very much.
Figures. Look there. It's the Lone Ranger and his engine sidekick. Why do those two go under? We'll all breathe easy. Just make sure you don't miss, because I don't want to tangle with them too. Come on. Two men. Let's find out who they are. Why you try to kill us? I'll tell you nothing. Never mind, Tonto. He's one criminal who'll be out of circulation for a while. I think you'd better take him with the sheriff in Glen Springs. And what about another fellow? Well, I'll try to pick up his trail. First, I've got to keep my promise to Phil's wife and find Phil. You come snooping around here. And? And bid me not to come. Well, that calls it snooping, so just snoop right on out of here. I'm not leaving till I say what I came to say. Your daughter is sick, Mr. Hawkins, very sick. The doctor says she won't get well unless she can go away for six months, maybe a year. Well, she's your wife. Why don't you send her away? You know, I don't have the money. The saddle shop isn't, well, it's just barely making expenses. But if you owe me the money, I'll pay it back, so help me. After all, it's for your own daughter. I ain't got no money. I'm a poor man. Now, now look, you didn't say your say, so, so get out of here. You miserable skinflint. Well, well, why should I help her? I told her not to marry you, you jailbird. I should have made a bed, let her lie in it. Hey, go, go, go on. Go on here, old man. That's all you're good for. Now get out of here. It's on the side of the law. Does Phil Beach here to see you? Yes. Are you his father-in-law? Yes, I am. I'm glad to hear that. Your daughter was afraid you two might come to blows. Well, can't his fault we didn't. <laughs> Dirty yellow cur. What makes you feel so strongly against him? Why, he's a thief and a jailbird, ain't that enough? <laughs> no, sir. He'll never get none of my money either. And Anne ain't gonna get no money, and darling, she's married to him. Phil Beach paid for his crime. What have they done to make you feel so vindictive against them? What have they done? She married him, didn't she? Gates my will. Honor thy father and thy mother. That's what the Bible said, and she didn't do it. No, sir. And she ain't going to get none of my money either. The Bible also says, the love of money is the root of all evil. You might give that some thought. Still in town? I am, but fingers ain't. I could really use a partner now, Phil. You need money, you said so. Well, so do I. How about it, Phil? Just one little job, that's all. Just one little job. We'll never see each other again. We could knock that bank over easy tomorrow. It's close today, kind of Lincoln's birthday. Lincoln's birthday? Yeah, it's too bad, but then... No, no, it's not too bad. We can't rob the bank, but... Lefty... 
We're about the same size, and our voices aren't too different. I've heard you recite. Suppose you could uh, memorize that by 4.30 this afternoon. What is it? Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Pretty short. Sure I can learn it. Why? Uh, if you'll recite it dressed as Lincoln this afternoon, I'll give you $500. $500? Will you do? <laughs> Man, you just got yourself a reciter. I'm very grateful to you. Phil, I'm so glad you're back. Here's an old friend of yours dropped in out of the blue. The Lone Ranger. Phil, it's good to see you again. I hope you feel the same. I, uh... Well, of course, I'm tickled to death. <laughs> I was just surprised, that's all. I never expected to see you or anyone connected with the law anywhere within miles from here. I thought I'd like to hear you give the Gettysburg Address. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered. I don't do it that well. That's not so, Phil. You do it wonderfully. Everybody says so. Your neighbors think a great deal of you. I'm proud of you, Phil. Uh, I've got to get ready. Excuse me, please? Of course. The way you see his costume, it's perfect. He's made quite a study of Lincoln, hasn't he? Oh, yes. He's worshipped Lincoln for years. Mrs. Beach, with a hero like that, he certainly can't go wrong. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. <laughs> Phil, are you going to take all day? Be right there. Phil, if I didn't know it was you, I wouldn't believe it. Sometimes I don't believe it either. I don't look much like Lincoln, but I certainly don't look too much like myself, do I? You certainly don't. Phil, it's almost time that you were going. You and the Ranger can ride into town together. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, that, that's fine. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to go on ahead. I want to have a talk with Sheriff Trumbull before the festivities start. But I'll be on hand for your Gettysburg address. I hope we meet again, Mrs. Beach. I hope so, too. Darling, why don't you take me with you in the buckboard? No. But, but I'm feeling better. Really, I know I could go. I said no. I don't want you there. Why not? Because it would be too much of a tax on your strength, that's why. Please, now, let's not argue about it. All right. What are you looking for? Spirit gone from my beard. Well, it seems to be staying on quite well. I know, but I want some in case of an emergency. Oh, here it is. Bye, darling. See you as soon as it's over. Hey, um, you sure this thing won't come off, eh? It won't. I just put some more spirit done on it. Now, you know what to do. Yeah. All right, I'll meet you here and have the money. Where are you going? Never mind. Now, five minutes after I leave, you go out and mingle with the townspeople until you get the Gettysburg address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's right about that hombre that tried to kill you. Got word from Tucson. He's wanted there for armed robbery and murder. Ah, uh, we do a good job, Kimisabe. You sure did. Sheriff, there was one man who got away. I'd give a lot to know what happened to him. Well, listen, you're introducing Phil Beach. You want to hear him give a Gettysburg address? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Four score and seven years ago. Phil sure looks the part, don't he? Our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. No, one's enough. Why, you cheap, you stick it out of here, stealing my money. Okay. You won't get away with it, you won't have to the shirt! Where have you been? I've been waiting here ever since I finished the speech. Come on, get out of those clothes. I've got to get out there and mingle with the crowd. Sheriff? Mrs. Bates, you just get to town? Yes. Well, I'm certainly glad to see both of you again. Too bad you missed Phil's performance. He did a fine job. He did? Oh, dear. And I thought I'd come in to surprise him. Well, you missed all the speeches, but the day's just beginning. They're going to start the fireworks pretty soon. Say, why don't you come in the office and sit and rest a spell, Mrs. Beach? Why, thank you. I believe I will.
All right. Now, where's the 500? Right here. Hey, you've got quite a haul there. I've got good use for it, too. I got better use for it. Hand it over. Follow it. <laughs> I can't stay and say goodbye to Phil, Mrs. Beach. But Tano and I'd better start looking for that other criminal, Blake's pal. We'll leave by the back door. All right, mister. I wonder where Phil is now. Oh, he's outside someplace. Come on, I'll help you look for him. Sheriff! 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 Sheriff, I done just been robbed by that jailbird, Phil Beach. Father, that's not true. Oh, yeah, what do you mean? You defend him? Why, I saw him when now, I was Now, hold on a minute, money. Hawkins. Why, why, you jailbird? You saw where I put my money in a while ago. I caught you stealing it. What are you talking about? I've been right here all this afternoon. Why, sure, the whole town saw him give the Gettysburg address. Why, why, he was still size with just like him, and I followed him all the way to town. I know he took it. Did you see his face? Well, he had a handkerchief around it, didn't he? Well, did you or didn't you? Well, I, I, I don't know where... Uh... Hawkins, a masked man robs you. And the first thing you do is put the blame on your son-in-law. It's a good thing he's got an alibi. Huh? My deputy says you just saw a stranger riding out of town like the devil was after him. I'm going to form up a posse. Phil, get your horse. Meet me here in five minutes. Come on, Tom. Can't tell which way they go. Come on. I'm not robbing anymore. Recognize him, Tonto? Mm, face familiar. Left him alone in the bank, robber. Well, that's right, Kimisabi. Well, here's the money he stole from Hawkins. Give it back to him. You give it to him, Phil. All right. Thanks. It's your money, Mr. Hawkins. Well, <laughs> I, I guess I was wrong when I said you took it. Thank you. Phil. Yes? Yeah. Why don't you give us Lincoln's address again, just as you did before? All right. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we're engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so dedicated and so conceived, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth.
Those were fine words, Phil. Quoting a fine man, Abraham Lincoln. You know, don't you? The man who made the speech before made gestures with his left hand. You just made yours with your right hand. Lefty couldn't have known where Mr. Hawkins had hidden the money. But you did. You're right, Mr. Hawkins. I took your money. But I had to have it. I'm glad you told them, Phil. I'm proud. Hawkins, we all know why Phil took the money. But he's broken the law. And he must pay the penalty. Well, Mr. Hawkins, do you still think your son is a no-good jailbird? Or can you see him as the man he is? A man worthy of your help. Phil, Ann and I are going to be gone about six months till she gets well. I, I think we all ought to be back together again. <laughs> Maybe you can use a pardon in that saddle shop. How does that sound to you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 where in tarnation did that masked man go? He's gone, Dad. He never stays around once his work is done. He's the best friend we've ever had. He's the Lone Ranger. Well, Silver, away! The Lone Ranger. Hear that, Tonto? Sound like many guns, Kim Sammy. It could be something else. Don't forget, today is the... Tonto, look there. It's a runaway wagon. Come on! And your friend, we'd have been killed if it wasn't for masked man. Oh, Tom, is that the hold up? Now, 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 oh. Kate. Now, look, mister. All I got on these three dollars. Believe me, sir, I'm not a bandit. But that mask. Don't let this mask trouble you. You're not afraid of me, are you, ma'am? Oh, well, he did save our lives, Tom. Yeah, that's right. What made your team bolt? Firecrackers? Yeah. How'd you know? Well, this is the 4th of July. It sure is. They're having a big rodeo back a piece. Appears like all the flat rocks out there celebrating. Somebody must have tossed them in there when we drove past. Well, if it's all the same to you, we'll be getting along. I got me a watch to pick up at the clockmakers. Kate here, give it to me on our first wedding anniversary. Forty years ago. Do you two live all alone? Yep, all my kids is growed up and scattered. Ma and me ain't got nobody but each other now. You want more than that? Hey, no, sir. But if anything was to happen, I... That's why I'm so all fired grateful to you. Don't mention it, Mr. Uh... Ellsworth. Tom Ellsworth. Well, goodbye. Thanks again. Hello. Adios. Bye. his watch. Well, give it to him. I can't, Steve. It ain't fixed yet. He said give it to him and get rid of him fast. If you don't, I will. Hello there. Anyone in? Oh, Joe. Anyone in? Just a minute. Well, you see, I didn't forget you. We were afraid you was off to the rodeo. I'm about the only man in town who ain't. Never disappoint a customer, that's my motto. Yes, sir, I stayed open special just for you. <laughs> yes, sir, here she is, all ready for you, running just as good as new. Now, just a minute, I'll set her to the exact second. Yeah, mainspring was busted, that's what it was. Overwinding, that's what done it. Yes, sir, it'll do it every time, overwinding. Here, I'll wrap it up. Hey, don't bother, I just take it. Oh, sure, sure, there you are. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? Yeah, three dollars even, yes, sir, and thank you very kindly. Uh-huh, and I'll just open the door <laughs> for you. Uh, oh, hold on, it ain't running. It ain't running. Well, here, let me take a look. Well, what do you know? I forgot to wind it. <laughs> I'm sure I'm getting absent-minded. Yes, sir. 
There, that does it. Now she'll run all right, all right. Much obliged. <laughs> oh, not at all. I'm glad you caught me up on it. I hope you have a nice trip home. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, ma'am. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> It's all clear, boys. Yeah. Not a soul in sight. Good. And while we're gone, you keep your eyes open. Look. It still ain't running. Not a kick out of it. Maybe if you shake it a little. He just plumb stopped. Well, darn if I'm going to pay three dollars for nothing. Come on. What a hole! Lord, me! Somebody blowed up the express office. Quick, Ma. Steve! Look over there. That old man's got a spot. Well, it's his tough luck. That not sound like firecrackers, Kimmy Sabby? No. Gunshots. They came from town. $30,000 worth here, Joe. Easy. Only I wish old Tom Ellsworth hadn't got a look at your faces. <laughs> I bet he wishes the same thing. Yeah, but you still got his wife to worry about. No, I don't think she saw him. The old man kept pushing her aside and she had her eyes covered up like this. They shot him. They shot my Tom. Please help him. Who did it, ma'am? Two men. I didn't see them very clear. They were robbing the express office. Well, try not to worry. The bullet only creased his skull. Him need doctor, Kimitani? Yes, and quickly. Tom will bring you and your husband into town while I go on ahead. Yeah, Luke. Joe, we'll be getting out of here. You got your story straight? Oh, sure. When I heard the explosion and then the shooting, I ducked under the counter here. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, Luke, let's go. Hold it. Somebody's coming. He's wearing a mask. Open the door and I'll plug him. Sure, hold on. He's gone inside. Give me your gun. What for? He's masked, ain't he? He's just made to order for us. How come? Somebody to pin it on. The masked robber. I'll hold him for the sheriff. That makes sense. You watch yourself. I'm making a citizen's arrest, that's what I'm making. And just to make sure you don't try no tricks. Get out of the way, I'll get him. No. There's a crack shot. You miss him and he'll get you. Lucky Joe, that's me. What'd you pick up? A uh, piece of the masked man's boot spur. I shot it off. Well, what's a piece of broken boot spur worth? It'll send him to jail, that's what good it is, yeah. It's proof, proof that he done the robbery. Yeah, you may be right. If you ain't at your funeral. Look, let's get out of here, you check the street. Hey, they're coming back. Who is? The whole town, they're coming back in the rodeo. Listen. And there's Tom Ellsworth's buckboard and engine's driving it. Yeah, that's Tom's wife in the back of the room. And there's Tom with his head in her lap. Yeah, he's dead, eh? 
Well, he can't be, or they wouldn't be toting him into Doc Varney's office. That means the Doc's going to patch him up. No, oh, here comes the sheriff. He's coming here. Get back. Back inside. Just a minute, please. Sam, am I ever glad to see you. Come in, come on in. What do you know about this robbery, Joe? Everything, Sam. I've seen him, the masked robber. I tangled with him. I shot this piece of spur off his boot. Yeah, you find that man and you've got your robber. I see. Just one man, Joe? Yeah, that's all I've seen. Come along with me, Joe. For what for? Because Tom Ellsworth's been shot. And his wife says there were two outlaws. <laughs> Still unconscious, Doc? Yes, yeah, pretty bad concussion, but he'll make it all right. Uh, where's his message? In there, asleep. I gave her something to keep her quiet. She'll be out for oh, five or six hours. Too bad. I wanted to get her story again, alongside of Joe's here. Sheriff, what I told you is gospel. That piece of spur proves it. Why don't you get yourself a posse instead of wasting time? Posses are my business, Joe. Doc, let me know the minute he comes to, will you? I sure will, Sam. I'll be in my office going through some wanted posters. We'll see if he can recognize any of them. You stay here, Joe. Right here, understand? Well, sure, Sam, sure. I got nothing better to do anyway. Come in. You. Hello, Sam. So you're the masked man. I'm afraid so. Glad you haven't forgotten me. Forget you? After what you did for me and Abilene when I was flat on my back? That long time ago, Sheriff. You not see me then. You were a plenty sick man. I sure was. You must be Tonto. Sam, I'm afraid we have a mean case in our hands. There's nothing between me and that cell block but the word of a little old lady. Don't I know it. Well, suppose you tell me your side of it while we wait for Tom Ellsworth to come to and maybe identify some of these bad men. All right. Kate, uh, Kate. Okay. Okay. She's right in the next room, Tom. She's asleep. I want to see her. Now, take it easy, Tom. You wouldn't want to wake her up, would you? No. No. Hustle over to the sheriff's office and tell him Tom's come, too. Me? Uh-uh. You heard him, the sheriff. He said for me to stay right here. Well, never mind. I'll go myself. Listen to me. Uh, if Joe, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, and we ain't got much time. What I gotta say is for your ears only. Do you hear me? Uh, yes, Joe. Uh, yeah, well, I promise you won't breathe a word. Uh, when them two fellas took a shot at you, I seen them, Tom, clear as I'm seeing you, and I recognized them. They're the Grody brothers, and they're killers. That's why my lips are sealed, Tom, and yours better be, too. Hi, Joe. Why? Because if you ever identified them, they'd stop at nothing. Nothing, do you understand, to get even with you. Yeah. They'd even kill your missus. No. Yes, Tom. If anything, anything was to happen to Kate, I... That's why I'm telling you, Tom. That's what I've come here for. I... Shh. The sheriff's coming. The sheriff wants to talk to you, Tom. Hello, Tom. How are you feeling? I'm... All right. That's him, Sheriff. That's the man that robbed the express office. I know all about him, Joe, and he's not the man that robbed the express office. Now sit down and shut up. He, he's a good man. I trust him. Here, maybe you better do this. Tom, I want you to look at these pictures. See if you can recognize them as the men who shot you. Now, this is the Durango Kid, wanted for mail robbery. No. Dave Atchison, train robber. Was he one of the men? No. Now, these pictures are the Grody brothers. Bandits and killers. They've been reported recently in this area. Why, well, these are men, Tom. What's the matter, Tom? Are these the two men? How can I tell? I can't see them. But, Tom, you saw the others. I tell you, I can't see them. I can't see anything. My sight. What's happened to me? It's gone. It's gone. Kate. Where's Kate? Don't let them. Don't let them hurt her. Take it easy, Tom. Come on with me. Come on. Well, what do you make of that? 
Sam, we know now there were two men who robbed the express office. As Tom said, don't let them. Don't let them hurt her. What about it, Joe? There could have been two or 20, I don't know. Because I ducked under my counter when I heard the shooting. All I seen was this one when I come out. Well, Doc, I just can't make it out. Couldn't even see his wife. Had to touch her to be sure she was there asleep. Yet he could see her before I showed him these pictures of the Grody brothers. May think him afraid what might happen to wife if him identify them. Then he's faking. Well, I doubt it, Sam. I think Tom actually lost his sight because he was afraid to see. Well, there is such thing as hysterical blindness. And I'd be willing to go along with it, Miss Jeff, if I was sure there was nothing else to it. Then why not make sure, Doc? There's a nice specialist in Abilene. You could take him there on the morning stage. I'd be glad to. One thing is certain. We can't pin this on the Grody brothers or anybody else unless Tom Ellsworth can identify them. What you doing? I'm fixing up a little old 5th of July firecracker loop. What for? You'd stay awake once in a while, you'd know what for. Just keep that morning stage to Abilene from ever getting to Abilene, that's what for. Why, well, is there some gold or something on it? She's carrying a little old man who just might get his eyesight back and start pointing his finger at us. This will keep him from pointing. Sheriff, here's my case against Joe Benson. Why should a man who's so scared of shooting suddenly turn brave, come out of his store, and put a gun on me? It does not make sense. Now, if Joe Benson is mixed up in it, he had motive and opportunity to scare Tom into hysterical blindness. When? When Tom regained consciousness, Doc came over to tell you about it. That left Joe alone with Tom. You think Joe scared the old man into this, this hysterical blindness by telling him the Grodys would do something to his missus? I'm almost sure of it. I think we'd better have a little talk with Joe Benson. Come on. That's funny. Joe's door being off the latch this early in the morning. You're right, Sam. It is before opening. Joe! Oh, Joe Benson! It's happy. Look. Sam, it looks like robbery. Him dead, Kimitami? Yes, Tom. He's been shot. Reckon you were right about him being mixed up in it. Uh, him have pencil in hand. He must have been trying to write a message. Sheriff, look at this. Grody's done it for the gold bomb on stage. We'll go off nine. Nine? Maybe it means nine o'clock. It's quarter past eight now. The stage left at seven. And Tom Ellsworth and his wife are both on it. And Doctor, too. Come on, Tom. Even now, we may be too late. this for anything. Ain't every day you can see a stage which goes straight up in the air. Hey, look back there. The mass men in that engine. Maybe we better head them off. Come on. Ah! Get out, Doc. You too, Tom, while I help her. 
Oh, I won't need you. No matter what happens, I'll never need you. Oh, please, Tom. Save yourself. You must. It's all right, honey. For nigh on to 40 years, we've been living together. Now, if it's our time to die, we'll die together. Oh, Tom. Get up on top. Throw the luggage off. Oh, you two are hurting me. I'm getting you loose, Ma. I can see. I can see. <laughs> Past help, Kimisami. That one, too. The bomb they made for the others killed them. Tano, as it says in Proverbs, whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. He that rolleth a stone will return upon him. Sorry, Sheriff, but we couldn't save the two outlaws. But we saved gold from Saddlebag. That proved them outlaws. But I can't figure out is the way my eyesight come back to me. Tom, it's not hard to understand. You lost your sight when you thought your wife's life was in danger. But when it really was, you could see because you had to. Well, folks, it's time Tano and I were riding out. Bye, Sam. Thanks, mister. Bless you for what you did for my Tom. Yes, ma'am. He never did say his name. He never does. But I don't mind telling you, he's the best friend the West ever had. He's the Lone Ranger. I am Silver! Oh!